and welcome to the MBOM podcast, where you'll learn to master the business of yoga. MBOM is a proud part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Amanda Kingsmith. I'm a 500 hour registered yoga teacher, a yoga business coach, and a total business geek. Here at MBOM, you'll learn everything you need to know to create a sustainable yoga business by learning from myself and guests from around the world about how they built their yoga businesses and about how you too can become a successful yoga teacher, studio owner, and much more. All right, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the MBM Podcast. I'm really excited that you're joining me for today's episode of the show. And this week's episode of the podcast is brought to you in part by Offering Tree. And I'm going to talk a lot about Offering Tree in this episode since... We're talking all about software, and obviously, they're one of my favorite softwares. So you're going to hear about them quite a bit throughout this episode since they are a great one-stop shop for all things yoga business, including website, email marketing, live streaming classes, courses, memberships, and so much more. And you can check them out at offeringtree.com forward slash MBOM. And that link will also give you a little bit of a discount code, which is pretty awesome. And I'm really excited to get into this episode today because this is one of the questions I get asked the most when I work with yoga teachers one-on-one, when I consult with yoga studios, I'm often getting asked about software and what types of things that I use in my business. And so I'm going to talk through some of my favorite software programs for yoga teachers. I'll let you know what I use, what I don't use, what I like about each of them, and so much more. So let's just get into it. The first thing that I want to talk about is websites. I feel like websites is kind of a key piece of software for yoga teachers. And there are a lot of different platforms out there. So it's often one of those things where we're doing a lot of different price comparisons and different, you know, comparisons around what's going to be best for us and our business. So the platform that I've used the longest for websites is WordPress. WordPress is probably one of the most popular softwares out there for creating websites on. And it's a really, really great platform. I definitely would recommend it. One of the things to keep in mind with WordPress is that you do need to have a hosting software or domain software with WordPress. And WordPress can be a little bit more complicated. Uh, The way that I've set up my website is that I've got my domain and my hosting through a company called Bluehost. So that's bluehost.com. And then they integrate really nicely with WordPress. And then I built my website website using a theme. It's under the Elegant themes and it's called Divi. And one of the reasons that I really love Divi is that Divi actually allows you to build on the front end, which is really cool. So if you are going to do the WordPress route, this is something I would I would definitely recommend is uh, using Divi. I think that Divi is like, you know, $99 a year or like two or three hundred dollars for lifetime access. So I just paid you know, for it for lifetime access. So I have it forever. And this is one of the things that we talk about in another episode of the podcast with Angela Seeley when we talk about websites. So that's WordPress and one of the things that I recommend. And another website platform that I do recommend is Wix. It's Wix.com, just W-I-X. And one of the reasons that I really like Wix is that it's pretty simple and straightforward to use. I think it might be a little bit more simple to build on Wix than it is on WordPress, just because Wix has kind of built everything into their site. And one of the things that can be a little bit tricky about WordPress is that you can you know, buy themes from all over the internet and then you upload them and you can modify them. And there's really a lot of customization and people really like this. Um, If they are looking for a more complex website or maybe they're working with a web designer or something like that. But if you are just looking for a pretty simple, straightforward website, Wix can be really nice because they have some really great templates that you can work with. And they really integrate a lot of different stuff within within the platform. So things like if you want to set up a subscription or have an email list or something like that, you can use it within Wix. So Wix is another great option for your website. 
And then, of course, you know, I mentioned that this episode is sponsored by Offering Tree. It is sponsored by Offering Tree for a reason, and it's because they are an amazing platform and they are a, a website platform. And it's really cool because Offering Tree has been known as a pretty simple website platform. Like you can go on and create a website, a basic template within like 30 minutes. And they've just added some features where now you can work with different themes and you can modify different pages and stuff like that. So if you're looking for a website, but you felt like in the past, maybe Offering Tree was a little bit too basic. Now they've got a lot more options with it that allow you to make your website a little bit more unique, which is really great. The one thing that I really like about Offering Tree as a web platform over something like WordPress would be the simplicity of it in terms of being able to actually use it. So how user friendly it is, especially for somebody who maybe doesn't have a background with coding or a background with building websites before. And then the other thing I like is that Offering Tree has a lot of other functionality in terms of what you can do with it. So you're not just getting a website. Whereas when you get WordPress, you are more or less just having your website set up. You're not getting your booking tools and stuff like that as well. And these are softwares that we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Um, And I'll give you some other recommendations if you do decide to use WordPress and that type of thing that will integrate really nicely. Um, But just know that if you go with something like Offering Tree, you can do a lot of this just within the platform. Wix also has pretty good compatibility with being able to integrate other aspects of your business. Um, The one thing that I like about Offering Tree over Wix is that Offering Tree was built for yoga teachers and wellness entrepreneurs, which means that the business side of it is really set up for us, whereas Wix is not necessarily set up for people like you and I that teach yoga. So those are websites. I definitely recommend, you know, checking out all the different softwares that are out there and doing price comparisons and feature comparisons based on what you are looking for in your business. But those are the top three that I would recommend. I think a fourth that I'll add in there would be Squarespace. I don't like Squarespace quite as much as the other ones I've mentioned, but it is a good platform. So if you want to go check that out, you also could do that. The next thing that I want to share is for live streaming. And I think that most of us are pretty familiar with this at this point. But for live streaming, I am a big fan of Zoom. Zoom is something I use for, you know, one on one coaching calls that I do, group coaching that I offer as well as podcast interviews. It is the platform that most yoga teachers and yoga studios that I've been working with have been using for their classes. Of course, there's some people using, you know, other platforms for live streaming and, and or using maybe like Instagram live or Facebook live. But I think Zoom is definitely like the number one platform that I would recommend. Zoom is free for just you know, two people. So if you have a private yoga business, you don't necessarily need a pro account. Um, But as soon as you get more than two people into the room, I think you only have like 30 minutes or something like that. So it's definitely worth it to upgrade to pro. It's about $14 a month. And if you pay for it for a year, it's even less. So I just have a year subscription with Zoom um, for the pro account. And that way I can do, you know, all the different things that I need to do in my business. And I think this is definitely like an essential software for a yoga teacher and especially a yoga teacher that's going to be working online. The next thing that I want to share is my favorite design software. So my favorite design software is Canva. It is canva.com, C-A-N-V-A. Canva has a free plan as well as a pro plan. I am currently on the free plan. I have had a couple trials and also paid for the pro plan. And it's really great. You get you know some amazing upgrades and stuff, but I haven't felt like it's been necessary for what I need in my business. But I really love Canva because it makes me feel like I've got some graphics design skills. So it allows me to do like, you know, event images and YouTube thumbnails and podcast thumbnails and 
um, other things like social media posts and that type of thing. You can do, you know, different videos on there, which is a really cool, like new feature that they have, as well as you can do like text overlay on images. Um, you know, if you look at the MBM account, our swipe files that we do with our like top tips every week from podcast episodes are designed on Canva. So Canva has a lot of functionality and I really don't feel like you have to be a designer to use Canva, which is the reason I really like it. I've taken, you know, courses on Photoshop and that type of thing, and I still find the software so hard to use. So I would definitely recommend checking out Canva if you're looking to do, you know, anything with YouTube or social media or hosting events, or you're looking for any type of design, it's even what I've designed my resume on. So if you're looking to even just get yoga teacher jobs and design a resume, I would definitely recommend Canva for that. The next section of what we're going to talk about is kind of booking payments and scheduling. So this would be okay, hey, we have our classes, we've got our class schedule that we want to create, we want to do it on Zoom, but we want to make things a little bit more functional in terms of people being able to register, pay us, sign a waiver, um, get the Zoom link automatically sent to them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a couple different platforms for this that I want to talk about are one, Acuity. Acuity is one of the platforms that I use in my business for booking podcast episodes. I feel like the software works really well for booking things like podcasts or one-on-one coaching. I actually don't really love Acuity for bigger group classes, although I have seen it used by a number of yoga teachers and it, it certainly is functional. So if what you're doing is basically creating a like weekly schedule with a couple of class offerings, maybe some workshops, maybe some one-on-ones. Acuity can be really great for people being able to see that schedule integrated on your website and then being able to click on, you know, what that, what that thing is and then, you know, book, pay, sign a waiver, and then get the link sent to them. So Acuity is great. It's about... $15 a month, I think. You you can have a free plan too, but if you want to take payments, I think the, the minimum is $15 a month and then it goes up from there. So Acuity is a pretty good software. Um, another one that you've probably heard on the podcast ages and ages ago is Schedulicity. Schedulicity is known as like a scheduling software. So again, for things like booking payments and scheduling, they are a pretty great option. Um, I haven't personally used them, but I do know a lot of yoga teachers and studios who have worked with them and have said really great things about them. So I think it's definitely worth adding them to the list in terms of softwares that are pretty functional for us yoga teachers in terms of our, our booking payments and scheduling. And then I want to mention Offering Tree again because Offering Tree, Offering Tree would definitely be my number one choice here in terms of booking payments and scheduling. If you have a website that's not on Offering Tree, you can still set up your Offering Tree, like booking payments and scheduling feature, and then actually embed it into another website. But one of the things that I love about using them as the website tool is that you can actually set up, you know, your schedule. So you can set up your class schedule, you can set up your private teaching schedule, you can add the prices for everything. And then you're able to basically um, put it out there so that people can click on it, they can you know, book the class, they can pay, they can sign a waiver once again, and then they just get the link sent to them. Um, So basically, what you're looking for here is something that's going to make your life easier as well as your students life easier. And the thing we want to avoid is like, just sending a zoom link to people who might be interested, and then having to chase them for like PayPal or Venmo. And, you know, maybe having them not have signed a waiver, that's not going to be totally legally sound. Honestly, it seems like it could be a lot of work to set this up, but it's so much easier when all you have to do is send a booking link to somebody and they can do everything there. And then you just see money show up in your account and you see, you know, somebody in your attendance list. So that's what we're looking with there. And 
I'm going to talk about some sort of similar softwares in terms of like running live classes, video on demand memberships and stuff for studios. And I want to just clarify that pretty well all of these softwares that I'm going to mention also have the booking payments and scheduling in them. So what I would really recommend is choosing one software that basically allows you to do pretty much everything in your business. Like the thing that you don't want to be doing is having, say, your your website on WordPress and then your like booking link for the privates you offer on Acuity and then having your live stream classes on Offering Tree and then you know having something else somewhere else like the more you can get in one place the easier it's going to be for you and i know for a lot of us we didn't get into teaching yoga because we wanted to have 4 million softwares that we pay for every month and need to learn and, and set up and run and that type of thing so the simpler you can make this the better so in terms of running live classes, doing video on demand, setting up memberships, or maybe running a studio, I'm just going to start with Offering Tree since we talked about them last. They have all of this functionality. So on top of being able to have your website as well as your um, your your booking payments and scheduling in there, you can also set up you know, your live classes, a video on demand library that can be either a part of a membership or sold separately, um, you know, monthly memberships for whatever different offerings you want. And um, right now, they're not geared towards studios, but that is something that they're working on for the new year for early 2022. So that will be coming very, very soon. And uh, we have a little discount code, which is offeringtree.com forward slash MBOM. And you'll hear about them a little bit more in this episode. Um, But just so you know, you can get a little discount with that. Another software that you've heard me talk about before that I really love is Interval. And you can check out Interval at interval.com forward slash J forward slash MBOM. And I really love how Interval is set up because they're super simple, super straightforward. They basically allow you to create a like live classes, video on demand membership site, either for a studio or for a yoga teacher. And you can sell your classes as individual classes, but most popular would be uh, like a membership. So maybe you have a membership for like $20 a month and people get access to all your video on demand classes. And then you can also set up live stream classes that can be a part of that or separate. And one of the cool features that Interval has is that when you are on their platform and they actually allow music to be played, which is something that's that's pretty cool. And you can control it right from their platform. So this is a really, really nice integration. So if you're kind of looking for more of like less of the website side of things and more of like, hey, I just need a space where I can like sell my classes and sell my membership and create video on demand, Interval is going to be really great for that. That is something that I would say similarly about Uscreen as well. So we had the founder of Uscreen on the podcast, gosh, a couple of years ago. His name is PJ Tai, and we were able to talk a little bit about video on demand. But Uscreen really specializes in video on demand, uh, similarly to Interval. Uscreen is not geared as much towards wellness entrepreneurs as Interval is. That would be one downside of them. But they really allow you to create like a beautiful video on demand library. I believe they do have some like live class features, but I would say that their specialty is very much like this is a video on demand library. One of the studios that I work with has their video on demand library set up their U screen and that's gone really, really well for them. So if you're looking for a platform where you can set up and host your videos and have people pay for them either individually or on a membership basis, um, U screen is a great platform as well as Interval, which I mentioned before. A couple softwares that I would say do pretty much all these things, live classes, video on demand, memberships and studios, um, but really are a little bit more, let's say, geared towards studios would be Moments and Arqueta. So Moments, which is formerly Ribbon, 
is really great for studios. You can set up a membership really easily. They have functionality for, you know, live classes and and lots of other things as well. Um, but I've seen it for people. I've seen it used the most for people setting up, you know, studio type stuff with video on demand and monthly memberships and that type of thing. And we have a link for that, which is moments.com forward slash question mark REF equals MBOM yoga. And I know that's a bit of a weird link if you are like walking or driving right now. So if you want to, you know, check that out, we'll put that in the show notes as well for you. And then with Arketa, who is formerly Sutra, we also have a link, but it's way too crazy to stay on this episode. So I'll just put that in the show notes for you if you want to check them out. Again, I would say that they have, you know, all the functionality that we've been talking about and are also great for studios. So if you are, you know, a studio versus an independent yoga teacher and you're not really interested in mind body online or the big expense with that, I would check out Moments and Arketa and see if they can support you with your online classes, your video on demand, your memberships, et cetera, et cetera. And before we dive into the next category, we're just going to take a quick little break to hear from today's sponsor, Offering Tree. Hey, yoga teachers, we're just taking a quick break from the podcast to talk about Offering Tree and memberships. If you teach regular yoga classes, do you offer a membership? When you start to have a loyal group of students who show up for you week after week, creating a membership is a great way to transition to reliable income that you can count on. You all know that I recommend Offering Tree as your online yoga business one stop shop. And that's because Offering Tree makes it easy to set up and grow your membership on top of everything else that you're doing in your business. When you use Offering Tree, you can create memberships that include unique bundles of classes, courses, and on demand offerings. And you can set up as many memberships as you want. You can charge clients monthly, annually, weekly, or choose your own billing cycle with Offering Tree's membership tools. And if reoccurring payments don't fit, you can also sell packages that can be refilled when needed. And as always, it's super simple to learn this aspect of Offering Tree and to set it up. So if you've been looking for an easier way to run the online part of your yoga business, definitely check out Offering Tree. It's an easy, all-in-one tool to host your website, schedule classes, private lessons, and sell memberships. And I have a special discount for you. Head on over to offeringtree.com forward slash MBO for 15% off one year of Offering Tree or 50% off the first three months. Once again, that's offeringtree.com forward slash MBO for a special discount on Offering Tree. All right, now back to the show. All right, let's get back into it. The next thing that we're going to talk about is courses. So if you are interested in running a course in your business or creating courses, there are some specific course softwares that you can use. So one that I've used in my business is Teachable. Teachable has a really reasonable monthly rate and you can even start out for free and try it out and see if it'll work for you and all of that good stuff. And basically, when you go into Teachable, they let you create a school. They let you create various courses. You can even put like workshops that you've done as recordings up there to resell And they have a lot of functionality from being able to email students that are coming through right from their platform. You can set up, you know, different areas where there's text and then uploads that people can download and then videos and that type of thing. So for most of us, if you've taken an online course, you've probably use Teachable at some point. It's a really popular software for this. And it's very, very specific for courses. You can also set up like monthly membership fees. So if you're looking to maybe create some sort of monthly membership, you can definitely do that on Teachable as well. But it's definitely most known as a course software. Thinkific is another one. So it's just like it sounds, Think and then Ific. And it's very comparable in price and functionality to Teachable. I would say that these two softwares compete pretty closely on being, you know, like the top course softwares 
to to be used um, for people who are kind of in the mid range. I've done lots of courses on Thinkific, and I find it you know quite functional to be able to use. Again, you can kind of go into your course, and then you see everything laid out on the left side, and basically you move through the course like section by section. And again, you can upload you know, videos, you can upload PDFs, you can upload audio, you can add text. Everything that Teachable does is, is very similar to Thinkific. Another similar platform that is more expensive but has like a lot more functionality and kind of acts as more of like a one-stop shop for things like courses and memberships is Kajabi. Uh, Kajabi is a really, really awesome platform. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it is just a higher price point. So for a lot of yoga teachers and especially yoga teachers starting out with courses, if they've never done it before, they might be like, hey, I don't know if I'm going to make any money off of this course or how many people are going to come into it. And so it can be a little bit of a steep price point. But I think it's worth mentioning just in case you are a little bit more advanced in your business, if you're bringing in more revenue and you're looking for something with a bit more functionality. Because again, one of the things to remember is like if you're signing up for these these platforms that are off of your like main platform that you're using, then you're going to have to integrate it in some way. So the downside of Teachable Thinkific in Kajabi in some ways is that say you're working off a Teachable or an Offering Tree website or a Wix website is that then you're going to have a link that takes people to a different website. They're going to have a different sign-in. They're going to have to enter their credit card in, a, in another capacity. And so it's basically taking them to another platform. So another option is to build your course on Offering Tree. So if you are using Offering Tree, you can actually build your courses right through them. And this is one of the things that, you know, again, why why I love them is because pretty much everything we've talked about you can do on Offering Tree. So if you decide to have a business where you have a website and you're offering live stream classes or even in-person classes, you're offering privates, and then you want to build out a course, you can easily do that on the platform without having to leave. Whereas if you were offering your live stream classes on something like Acuity and then embedding that into WordPress, and then you want to build out a course or a membership, then you're going to have to get another platform. And quite honestly, this is basically the route that I've taken in my business where I've set up WordPress and I've had Acuity as a booking software. And then my courses are set up on Teachable. And it's just another monthly fee and another password to use. So if you can get everything all in one place, then that can be you know, super, super helpful for, for yourself. And it'll just make things a little bit easier. So again, those platforms that we talked about for courses are Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi, and Offering Tree. There's obviously a lot of other softwares out there, but those are the four that I'm most familiar with and the ones that I would recommend for yoga teachers who want to get started. The next thing we're going to talk about for software is email newsletter software. And this is really important because having an email newsletter is honestly going to be you know, even more valuable to you than being on social media. I would definitely recommend all yoga teachers have an email list. Even if you don't even have an online presence, you can be setting out some sort of clipboard or sign up form for people who are attending your in-person classes. And once you're getting people's email addresses, you don't want to just be sending them like BCC'd emails from your Gmail. Uh, Google really doesn't like that. And they'll often send BCC'd emails to spam folders or they'll really heavily limit you. So once you get like more than 50 people, it's not even going to let you send your email. So I definitely recommend using a software. So if you decide to go with a platform like Wix or Offering Tree, this stuff is built in, which is, again, you know, some of the perks of using these platforms. If you are on WordPress or you don't have a a website yet, uh, things that you can use would be MailChimp and ConvertKit. There are many other email newsletter platforms, but these are the ones I'm most familiar with and have personally used in my business and with the businesses that I work with. So these are the ones that I recommend. MailChimp is really great for starting out. It is 
free for your first, I think, 2,000 subscribers or something like that. And then ConvertKit is free for your first 1,000. Obviously, there's lots of different functionality with this. Things from creating landing pages where people can sign up uh, to creating email automations for freebies or lead magnets. So if you're familiar with the concept of enticing somebody to sign up for your email list with a freebie, you can create landing pages through you know all these different softwares and then set up these auto emails emails so that basically somebody signs up and it sends them the freebie they've signed up for and then they're on your list and then you can send out emails from there. So super, super great platforms that I would definitely recommend. Um, I used MailChimp for the first few years of my business and then changed to ConvertKit maybe a year and a half, close to two years ago and really, really love it. I find ConvertKit a little bit more functional than MailChimp. So Definitely something I would recommend, but both yoga studios that I work closely with use MailChimp and so do a number of yoga teachers that I work with. So if you are looking for a email platform, I would definitely recommend both MailChimp and ConvertKit. And you can just sign up for both, do some free trials with them, check them out, see what's going to work best for you. And then, you know, like I said, if you are using Wix or Offering Tree, this stuff is built right in and you can just use the functionality within that, which will be really, really helpful. Again, you can save yourself a monthly fee. You can save yourself another login and it'll just be really, really simple. And so the next section for our software is batching and automation. And I use this mostly for content creation and social media. So one of the things I always recommend to yoga teachers is to create a content calendar so you know when stuff is going out and you can kind of idea dump into your content calendar and then schedule stuff as you go. This way, we're not spending all of our time just on social media trying to come up with a post and a photo and then, you know, check constantly to see if people have liked it or commented. You can basically spend, you know, 15 minutes a day going on to social media, engaging with people, resharing to stories, et cetera, et cetera, and doing a lot of your like creation of what you're going to share outside of actually being on the platforms. So I just use Google Sheets, which is part of, you know, Google Drive. Uh, If you have Gmail, it's completely free to use this. So I use Google Sheets for my content calendar. And then for the actual scheduling of the content, uh, there's two platforms that I recommend. One is Hootsuite. So it's H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. You can get on there for free, uh, but they do make you pay if you're going to be on more than you know, a few platforms, I think more than three platforms. And if you're posting, you know, more than X amount of content per week and per month. So if you're posting a lot, then Hootsuite might not be the best because you will have to pay. But it is a really great platform in terms of being able to, you know, set your posts up and get them scheduled and that type of thing. Recently, I switched from Hootsuite to Facebook Business Suite, and I've really been loving it. Basically, Facebook Business Suite is integrated right with Facebook. So uh, there's no payment that's involved with it. And you can set up your Facebook and Instagram accounts so that they're connected to Facebook Business Suite. And then you can schedule all of your content from there. I feel like this has been one of my biggest like business hacks has been getting into having a content calendar and scheduling things out so I can have things scheduled, you know, weeks in advance. And it basically decreased my stress and anxiety around being on social media. It gave me more space for actually being creative with posts. And then it's really allowed me to just be more effective and productive because I don't have to do you know, my content on the platforms. I just find, especially with Instagram, it's such a time suck. I just get on there and I start scrolling and I start looking at Instagram stories. And the next thing I know, it's like an hour, maybe two hours later, and I'm still doing that. And I'm like, I need to get off of here. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't even do what I came on here to do. So basically by using Facebook Business Suite and Hootsuite and having a content calendar, I'm able to do all of my my preparation and that type of thing without actually going on the platform, which has been so, so helpful. So definitely something I recommend, especially if you want to be on social media and you just find that it's a little bit of a time suck for you. 
All right. So the next thing I want to talk about are some organizational tools that I use in my business that are really helpful. And one of the ones that I just mentioned that I use pretty much constantly is Google Drive. So if you do use Gmail in any capacity, you have access to Google Drive, which means you have access to Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Forms. And basically for me and my business, I have a lot of folders set up and a lot of different areas where I can sort things, everything from, you know, folders for coaching clients to yoga teacher training programs that I've worked in to, you know, folders and whatnot for photos for the podcast to storing my actual podcast episodes. And if you're going to be working with anyone else, whether it's hiring somebody for your team or just collaborating with another yoga teacher on a workshop, being able to share things via Google Drive is going to be hugely helpful. You know, even just being able to share photos or audio or video content or to create a folder for whatever you're working on or whatever you're doing together so that you can both upload from your individual devices and you don't have to worry about like texting each other things or the limits on sending emails, et cetera, et cetera. So Google Drive is definitely definitely one of my biggest organizational tools that I use. Similarly, having Gmail or Google Workspace set up so you don't necessarily have to have a email that's connected to your domain like hello at amandakingsmith.com. Um, you can just have, you know, amandakingsmith at gmail.com or something like that. But if you do want to set up a more professional email, you can use Google Workspace. So for me in my business, I have the email info at mbomyoga.com and that's set up via Google Workspace. And I think it costs me, you know, about $5 a month or $60 a year to maintain that. And I feel like it just makes it a little bit more simple for me to have this email address that is directly associated with my business. So again, having a professional email in whatever capacity can be really, really helpful for organizations so that people know that they're emailing a legit business. I definitely do not recommend using an email that maybe you created in high school or university or when you were younger. You know, mine was like funkyfeet4 at hotmail.com. And I would definitely not use that for my business. I don't really think that that's super professional. So I would, I would recommend, you know, either using Gmail or Google Workspace to get a more professional email. Other things that I use for organization are different project management softwares. So a couple that I really like are Trello, Asana, and Todoist. And we'll put links for all of those in the show notes. Trello is really great for creating boards and then tasks, and you can collaborate with other people on them. Um, Asana, very similar where you can, you know, just set up your projects. And then I find Todoist works a little bit more like a to-do list. So it's kind of like a digital to-do list. But you can also create projects and boards similar to both Trello and, and Asana. So I find these platforms all pretty similar. And it just seems to be a matter of like people signing up for them and creating something on them and just seeing which ones they like and which ones they don't and what they like more about each one. I've used all three of these softwares in my business and for different collaborations with different people. And Todoist is the one that I use the most often. I like it because I can set to-do lists as well as create projects. But I would really recommend having some sort of project management software so that you can you know, actually be following through with your goals and setting deadlines and that type of thing. Obviously, having Gmail is great because then you have access to calendars, to Google calendars, and you can put your different tasks into your calendar. But being able to use these other organization tools is really Really helpful for being able to work through not only daily tasks, but bigger projects. Another thing that you may have heard me talk about on the podcast before is how much I love having an actual like paper planner. So something that's really visual for me. And there's so many that you can get. You can just go to any, you know, office depot or staples or whatever, and you can go in and you can get a planner. You can get the smaller ones that you could carry around with you. You can get the ones where you can put up on the wall, which some people really love. Uh, for me, I personally really love the passion planner. So 
that's one that as much as I can, I get the passion planner. And then what I do is I write out my schedule and whatnot so I can have a visual of my schedule that's not on my phone. Everything goes into Google Calendar for me just because of time zones and booking and making sure that all of that's good. But I really like to also have things visually laid out in front of me and then I can put in appointments and other tasks I have and that type of thing. So if you're somebody who's kind of maybe a bit more old school like me and you really like having that visual in front of you that's not digital, I would definitely recommend recommend checking out the passion planner. And we've done, you know, different podcast episodes on organization and batching and that type of thing in general, so you can definitely check out those episodes for more information on that type of stuff, but in general these would be, you know, my top resources and top recommendations. The last thing I want to share today is around taxes and accounting. I know this is not everyone's favorite topic. It's certainly not mine. But I think having some organization around this can be really helpful. So you can use Google Drive and just use like a Google Sheet to keep track of everything. That's certainly a really great option. Um, You could also use like an Excel spreadsheet. Google Sheets is, is free if you don't have Microsoft Office on your computer. So that's a great option. And then for softwares, one that I would recommend is QuickBooks. You can get it on your phone and you can set it up with your bank account. And then you can set like auto tasks to sort so that all of your expenses and your income are sorted, which is really great. And what you can do at the end of the year is make sure everything's good, sorted properly. And this will go right into the other software I recommend, which is called TurboTax. TurboTax will connect with your you know, government accounts. So being Canadian, it's the Canadian Revenue Agency. So TurboTax talks right to the CRA to bring in, you know, my investment income and any other income I made. And then it also, you know, talks to QuickBooks, which brings in like my expenses and stuff like that. So you can really simplify the process for yourself by just having things a little bit more organized. Of course, these things do come with fees. So just check that out. But I, I feel like the fees are pretty, pretty reasonable in terms of being able to save yourself a big headache at the end of the year. So lots of different softwares that we can use in your business. Of course, these are all just recommendations and some of my personal favorites. So make sure you're going through and just looking at what you need in your business based on what you're creating and what you're doing you know, for, for your yoga business and just try to simplify as much as possible. That's why I recommend some of those one-stop shop uh, different platforms like Offering Tree because it'll make it a lot easier. It's a little bit less of a headache. The more we can keep things in one place, the easier it is for us and the less decisions we have to make around things like softwares and the more time we can spend on actually creating awesome class content. Uh, Of course, if you have any questions, please make sure you reach out. It's info at mbmyoga.com. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you've learned a lot in this episode and I will see you next week. Okay. Bye for now. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of the podcast. To find links, notes, resources, and everything mentioned in today and all episodes of the show, you can head on over to mbomyoga.com. You can find the podcast and myself on Facebook and social media at Mastering the Business of Yoga. And I would love for you to join the private Facebook community, Yoga Business Badasses. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please make sure you reach out to me at info at mbomyoga.com. And last of all, if you enjoyed this episode of the show, please make sure you hit subscribe and leave a review for the podcast. It would mean the world. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Namaste. Namaste.